Hello everybody, I wanted to make a quick, hopefully quick, video about the farm I'm going to do to level my warrior in Wrath. Uh, I've decided to do Solo Botanica. It's because Blizzard recently made a change to lockouts where the lockout timer begins when you zone in rather than zone out. So quick instances like Botanica that you can do every 12 minutes have higher value compared to UK. Uh, here's a little bit of the NIT I had. You can see 1.51 million, 1.584. 1.58, 1.6, all at level 70. It's about 1.57 million average. And it doesn't really diminish. It diminishes at the same rate as Utgard Keep. But it's much easier, and it's just more experience, because you can you can run it non-stop as long as you do 12-minute runs, which the fastest run I've ever done was like 12 minutes and 20 seconds. Anyways, the gear I use, you don't need any specific gear for this. I would aim for at least 90% avoidance if you want to try this. But there's no specific piece that you need. Uh, I'll just mess over my gear real quick. Uh, things with heavy block rating are really good because it, obviously, as you can see, you can get a lot of block. You have this. I put uh, the hit enchant on it because I felt that was tanky enough. Uh, this is really good too. It has defense and hit. If you have something like the KT neck, that'd be better. Or the Reliquary of Souls neck. It's tier 6 shoulders, defense dodge. You just want avoidance on every piece, basically. You want to use an axe no matter what. Um, even a a bad blue axe is going to be better than like even Warglaives, I would say, just because axe specialization is so good. The shield, I didn't really care about the armor because I'm not really getting hit anyway. So I just wanted to go for the avoidance. If you have a Bulwark of Azimuth, it's probably fine too. Once again, just avoidance, avoidance, avoidance. Block rating and block value on shields. And then your trinkets are really going to depend on the rest of your gear. If you feel like you're tanky enough, you don't need to use tank trinkets. Um, I'm using... Madness for the hit. Tsunami Talisman is also a really good choice for a DPS trinket. And Figuring of the Colossus. This gives an insane amount of block. This along with Silenes are probably the two best tank trinkets. But once again, you don't need this much avoidance. So you could just choose DPS trinkets if you have them. Uh, like I said, Madness is really good. Berserker's Call is really good. Shard of Contempt is really good. BNS is decent. I don't know if I said that. And uh, here are the talents I'm using. Pretty standard. There's like no real deviation you can do here. At level 70. And for consumables, I use Sharpening Stones, Flask of Chromatic Wonder. I chose this because like it has decent offensive stats and it has resistance. And there's actually a lot of unavoidable magic damage in Botanica. For the scroll, I chose Agility because uh, it gives you damage and avoidance. You can apply these on your chest to heal you a little bit. And then for food, since I'm not hit capped, I'm using hit food. If you are hit capped, you can use Agility food. On top of that, I have a bunch of like food to just eat and a bunch of health pots. You don't need the faps or anything. This is for Utgard Keep. Uh, that about covers it. And here are my glyphs. Cleaving, Blood Rage, Battle, Sleeping Strikes, Charge. There's no other glyphs up for debate. These are the ones you should use. Now for the run itself, there's a couple of mobs that are somewhat problematic that I'll talk about here. These protectors in the front don't really do anything. They do a large strike that you can avoid and partially resist. So as long as you keep your front to them and don't let them hit your back, you'll be fine. These robots, uh, a couple seconds into engaging them, you want to hit Spell Reflect because they're going to do an instant knock-up that does like a thousand damage. You can see it knocked itself up there and did about 900 damage. And I just focused those first because they're annoying. They also cast an Arcane Explosion, so you can Shield Bash that if needed. And once again, if you're playing UA, you always want to be fighting at least two mobs at a time. Fighting one mob at a time is pretty bad. I pull this robot, I'm going to kill it again. Hopefully I Spell Reflect a couple seconds in. I did. It died even before it casted it because UA is a very balanced spec. Now into these next packs, the Menders do a Mind Blast and a Heal, and the Green Keepers do a, a Wrath Cast, Green Keepers Fury, that just does damage. They also do an Instant Shock that you cannot reflect. You can reflect Mind Blast and you can reflect the Wrath, but you cannot reflect the Instant Damage. So on these packs, you want to focus the Green Keepers. Because you, you don't want to eat, you want to avoid as much damage as possible. Now the Robot pack, you go in here, you blast the Robot, a couple of seconds in, I should Spell Reflect. And then I'm going to look out to Shield Bash these. I actually miss my Shield Bash because I'm terrible, and then I get Mind Blasted too, but I'm so geared it doesn't matter. You could drink a Health Pot here also. Just drink Health Pot. Every time you drop combat, just drink a Health Pot because the timer starts immediately. 
I think this is one of the earlier runs, so it wasn't really focusing the green keepers, but you should be. I should reflect that. There we go. Kick this one. As soon as that dies, I want to pull the protectors because I want to get meleeed so I can spam revenge. Do as much damage as possible. You can also never you should never feel bad about eating. You're gonna have to regen no matter what. It doesn't matter when you do it. You'd rather be safe than sorry. Same old, same old, you just kill these mobs. The next pack has these birds, and on pull they'll charge you and stun you. So if you're fighting a bunch of mobs and you get stunned, you're going to take a ton of damage. What I like to do, I usually just charge the humanoids so that the birds, if they do stun me, they won't be able to attack me at the same time. Because they'll be out of range. I want to pull this into the robot too, ideally, so I can kill the robot fast. You never want to do a robot by himself. If I do here, it's a mistake. Anyway, pop the reflect a couple seconds in. Kick that. Now this is just kind of, I should be pulling a protector right now. Probably press spell reflect again. See, he did an arcane volley there, and I had no kick up, and you can't reflect it. So I just took a bunch of damage there because I didn't kill this protector in time. Also, that thunderclap, don't thunderclap, it's bad. It does like no damage, and makes the mobs hit you slower, so you get fewer UA procs. This is just a bunch of protectors, they don't do anything. The next pack is a... What is it? The Falconer? The Falconer's cast an arcane explosion that you want to kick. Burst this down, the Falcons don't do anything. If your gear is any decent, you should kill it in one cast. I didn't even cast, actually. You don't want to pull these Blood Falcons into the next pack, because the Blood Falcons can stun you with that sweep, and the Protectors, like I said, they do that large strike. And you're not going to be able to avoid anything. So here, to be safe, I eat the full. In these next packs, there's protectors and stewards. The stewards, after a couple seconds, will cast a, a, like a flurry. It's like an AoE whirlwind that does like 700 damage a second. I like to focus them so they don't do that. If they do, you can step out and intercept them to stop it. Uh, I just pulled the boss with these mobs too. I always want to fight the boss with other mobs to proc revenge, otherwise it's too slow. You could also probably opt for just skipping the boss if your runs aren't... Like, if you're not risking having, like, sub-12 minute runs. Anyways, I pull the steward, I focus the steward. Because I don't want to get whirlwinded on. Also, you should Sweeping Strike's basically on cooldown. Anytime you're about to eat, you should Sweeping Strike's also. He spawns adds. One of the mobs is a Mind Blast you can reflect. You can also kick it. Let's kill this boss kind of slowly. If you run out of mobs, you should drag this boss to the next trash pack. Because like I said, you don't ever want to fight the boss by itself. Because you're not getting enough revenge procs. You're getting like literally half or a third as many revenge procs as you should be. I should be using sweeping strikes here, but I'm not. Now these packs, I think the researchers do a poison dot. So you want to focus them first. Uh, and the chemists, they'll like drop a bomb of poison on the ground you want to move out of immediately. Also, on these packs, you can just throw your Reflect out whenever it's up. They do, like, instant shocks and stuff that you can avoid with Spell Reflect. Just mow down the Researchers, and it's really easy. The Botanist will do a heal that you can just ignore. You can kick it, too. I don't think there's anything else you can kick on these trash packs. That Vial of Poison is going to put Poison on the ground. I should have moved faster. This whole room's the same. It's just a bunch of these mobs. Just focus the Researchers so the Poison doesn't stack up. Because it does stack. If you pull a bunch and you're not focusing them, you could have like three stacks and you'll have to eat for a while. Pretty simple. Kill some more researchers. I have one stack of the poison on me right now. It's Take it for like 270, 300. The Geomancers, I don't think they do anything. Maybe these are the mobs that are can explosion, actually. You shouldn't cleave here, because the Freighters don't do any damage, and they just give you free revenge procs. So just spam revenge. Uh, this boss, I don't know if I kill it in this pool. Uh, I wouldn't kill it, just because lockouts are 12 minutes. And the boss kind of takes a while and has like an invulnerability phase and doesn't attack that often. I'm just going to eat because, you know, you can eat whenever, as long as you don't overfill on HP. I guess I do pull the boss's pull. 
There's a researcher that pats down this uh, bridge that you want to pull also. But if you do pull the boss, you want to fight it with trash once again. But when you pull the trash, you probably want to focus the researchers. I was never able to kill the boss in one phase. He'll uh, go immune and spawn adds. I think the boss gets like almost 9,000 experience. It's not massive, but it does kind of take a while sometimes. Here come the ads. The boss is immune, so you have to kill these little ads that he spawns. I should be pulling the next pack. And once again, you don't want to fight the boss by itself. Because you're not getting enough revenge procs, you're just doing bad damage. I should also be like dragging to the next pack, but... I guess I'm just a noob in this run. The shield bash slows the mob because the game is bad. Same thing, we go to the Geomancer, we kill it, make sure it doesn't arcane explosion. I don't think there's anything to reflect on these. And I got hit with arcane explosion. You can range it sometimes. I thought I could range it there, but I couldn't. I'm cleaving these even though I shouldn't be. I should just be dragging them. Uh, in this next room, these channelers will put a buff on themselves sometimes. It looks like unstable affliction. Your number one prio is to shield slam it off, because it's a magic buff. The mobs I focus here are the insiders. The insiders will cast a, a poison that you can kick. Deadly poison? I kicked it right there. It does a lot of damage, it lasts like a minute. You see, this is the buff right here, Sunseeker Ore. You want to shield slam that immediately. If I was any smart, I would add this to my plater and immediately purge it. I purge it there. Uh, focus on the insider. I think you might be able to throw a random spell reflex here, I don't really know. The herbalist will root you. The root is like very low prior because if you get rooted, it'll just heal you through second one. And I think it'll outheal the damage that the roots do. But obviously, if you're trying to move to the next pack, you want to either reflect it or kick it. If you're rooted, you can just eat for a second. I think I can refresh my food buff here, yeah. I'm pretty sure it's worth refreshing your food buff, I don't know. These Reapers, I don't even think they do anything. Like, these mobs are very weak. The only problem is the Insiders, if they stun you. So you want to burst the Insider really fast, because it doesn't matter how much avoidance you have. If you get stunned, you're dead. Well, you're not going to die, but you're going to take a ton of damage. You might die if they're all enraged. Also, for shield block, I don't think it really matters when you shield block. Like, I'm already avoidance cat, basically. I kicked that deadly poison. You can probably reflect this curse, but it's not reliable. I should be pressing reflect here regardless. Insider comes in, I should focus it. Now, three insiders is kind of scary, because you don't know if you can get them all down before you get stunned. The stun doesn't last very long, like the UK stun. Or unlike the UK stun, so you last like two seconds on an orc. But if you have a bunch of empowered mobs on you, you're going to take just an obscene amount of damage. I also skip this boss, pull this channeler, and then move on. Look to see if the channeler puts the buff up. He doesn't. Just move on. There's two stealth mobs here. You just pick them up and kill them. Two or three, I think it's two. And then this next hallway doesn't have any scary mobs either. The last part is pretty easy in Botanica. Nothing really does anything anymore after this. You might be able to reflect the poison of the tricksters too, I have no idea. I also throw out random reflects here. I, they might shock. The gene splicers do a death and decay. I focus them down. They, I kill them so fast they almost never cast it. But I do interrupt the death and decay. The death and decay ticks for a ton. You need to move out of it. And if you get rooted inside of a death and decay, you should shield wall. Just to mitigate some damage so you eat less. But yeah, they just fall over. Walk in, spam revenge. Get a ton of experience. Very repetitive. I kick that root. Probably could have reflected it. Actually, if I reflected it, I couldn't drag the mobs, which I'm not doing anyway, but... You know how it is. Two protectors is the mobs that don't do anything, except the strike. I don't think it's hit me. One thing that I'm doing here is I'm putting on figurine, because you can basically get a full heal at the end with all the plants. Put on figurine for the full heal. Wait a second so it actually switches. These horrors also don't do anything, they just melee you. 
and you kill them. There's three packs of these. They move kind of slowly, so it's kind of weird to drag them into the next pack. I skipped this boss also. I tried him once and I got destroyed and I figured it's just not worth it. He like teleports away and does weird RP and summons adds that mind flay you. I don't think it's worth killing. Especially since you're not worried about your lockout speed because of the change. Kill this mob and the dungeon's almost over. At this point my figurine is up. You don't need this, it's just... It helps a little bit. I pull all these and make it make way for the exit. I don't have trinket menu on, so I don't have a keybound, so I click it from the frame. Like a true gamer. As you can see I'm healing a decent bit here. Yeah, that about covers it. I think I'll be doing this till seventy seven or seventy eight and leaving for Sholazar. And once I finish Sholazar, I'll probably go to Drakthron Keep. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.